what were your uh, memories as a, as a student about, what were your impressions about the school or about Mr. Beaster or teachers you may have? Well, Mr. Beaster was a great, really a great man. I, I, I liked him. I think, he's, I think he founded the school, didn't he? Back around 1910? Right. Uh, well, he was in charge of everything. And, uh, uh, well, he was a friend of our family. We knew, we knew him reasonably well. Just a, a really a great man. Um, of course, he was way up there. You didn't see him very frequently or anything like that. But Fred L. Beaster. Now, uh, they named the gymnasium after him. Did you know what that land was before then? No. It was a, a place called the um, <coughs> Proctor Grimshaw Mansion. Uh, it was an old colonial building, a huge building that the family lived in, and uh, uh, it it uh, apparently was bought by the high school and torn down, and that's where the gymnasium was right, na named after. That after him. This is a dedication brochure from Maine South. You can have that if you want it. It's it's got a picture of Hillary in it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh. and you look at the last page there. Uh, if you want that, you can have it. Uh, you go to the last page, and I, Hillary will be there, I think. And she was a uh, smart kid. Huh? She got our department award that first year. Really yes. smart. Daniel Rice, ever heard of the Native Farms? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's Dan and Ada Rice. Oh, is that right? That's where the name came from. I used to, to work for them. They lived, They were at the corner of Naperville Road and Butterfield. Huh. And then they owned thousands of acres out there. Hundreds of acres, anyway. Uh, they were there, uh, a girl named Libby Swift, from the Swift family. Remember that uh, name? Yeah. Uh -huh. Libby Swift lived out there, and um, the fellow who had our farm was a guy named Broxham, Clifford Broxham, who was president of Union Dairy. Um, my great uncle had a, f a factory in Forest Park, and Union Dairy is right next to him. Union Dairy went broke in 1929, and that's how my great uncle bought the farm and my dad owned 30 acres next to it. Uh, things were a lot different in those days. In Let fact, me mention one thing he just told me this morning. Yeah. From where he was at Glenbard, he could see the buildings at Wheaton College. Yeah. Yeah, That's our, all I'm saying. <laughs> we had about, we farmed about uh, oh, 100 acres there. And, uh, uh, when I was on a hill on a tractor, I could look up. Nothing between us and Wheaton. It was all farms out there. And uh, I, I was going to show you a bunch of the stuff. Okay. That if you're interested in. I am. Oh, uh, I, I I just grabbed a bunch of stuff that I could get here. Thank you. What was the name of the mansion again? Proctor Grimshaw. The, the Proctor, I I think it was called the Proctor Grimshaw Mansion, and it was there on the. Um, uh, what was the little street west of Glenbard at Park Boulevard? Then? Okay. Well, here, here we go. Uh, here, here's what I, Bob, I was talking. I asked Bob to get me some stuff. I, I had. Well, let me give you the names of my favorite teachers all the way through. Um, I. Uh, Elmer Stolte was uh, one of them that uh, I mentioned. He was a science teacher. He was a good guy. Um, I had I was a, a ham radio operator uh, when I was uh, 12 years old, I think. So uh, in the science class, I taught all the electricals. My favorite teacher at Glenbard at all time was my first year Latin teacher. Her name was Delphi Patterson. Now she wasn't she wasn't there when you were there, I'm sure. Um, she, um, well, I I just loved her because uh, I was a good Latin student, and uh, so she was. Uh, a girl named Mary Moore was uh, my English teacher. I didn't get along with the English department very well. I got along with everybody else, but not the English department. First of all, I had gone to a country school. You know, what, you know where the Bonaparte Theater is? No. Art Boulevard in Butterville. Well, that building is right next to Glenbard oh, South. Yes, I know the one you, yeah. I know that the was one our one-room schoolhouse. Yeah, it, but it, it looks was like a, one, yeah. It was unlike a one-room schoolhouse. It's Bonaparte Theater, and I was Bonaparte School. And there was a, back in the 18, I, I don't know a lot of history on the area. There was a town of Bonaparte, which was right at the corner of uh, 
Butterfield Road and the uh, DuPage River, the east branch of the DuPage River. And so that whole area is known as Bonaparte, and I went to Bonaparte School. There were, it was a one-room schoolhouse. The teacher was um, uh, an excellent teacher named Helen Ott, and uh, she was a farm girl from the area. And uh, so when I, I went, there were three kids in my graduating class. We all went to Lombard. And uh, the other two, I was college prep. In those days, you were college prep or not. Mm -hmm. I was college prep, and they, they went into, they were, uh, took the shop classes and things like that. But anyhow, uh, going back to the teachers, um, I had a fellow named Keatsman. Uh, I don't remember what his first name was. He was my homeroom teacher and uh, uh, taught mathematics. I didn't get along with him very well, uh, but um, uh, let's see, that was my freshman year. Sophomore year, I had a fellow named Ralph Magor, M-A-G-O-R. Uh, he was uh, taught plane geometry, and I, I never missed a question in plane geometry that year. And I had a girl named Helen Trowbridge. Uh, you, you never, she was not there, I'm sure, when you were there. She taught biology, and I got a, I had a record there of never missing a question in biology. So uh, those, that was a good year for me. And uh, I, had a girl named El I had a girl named Eleanor Alexander for uh, Latin, second year. And I had Delphi again, third year. And uh, a fellow named Gronwald. Oh yeah, I know Gronwald. Grony. Yeah. I don't remember what his first name was. He taught physics. He was a really a great, great teacher. And his name comes up a lot in, uh, in the interviews, yeah. Everybody uh, knows him? Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, I'll call him Grony. Everyone says, Grony, yeah. Every, everybody calls him Grony. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, physics. I was a good physics student. And um, then uh, I had a girl named Ivy Britton. Hmm. Ivy was taught, uh, I taught Latin, took Latin and I took extra class in Spanish. Well, I remember my English class because um, a pretty girl used to sit next to me, she'd put her plastic feet up and push me and kick me in the back. So I remember those chairs, they were just chairs with an arm that looked like this, you know. That was the English class and that was most of our classes, I think. Biology was tables and uh, physics had the uh, uh, raised area so the you could sit up there and look, every, everybody could watch things. How are we doing? Everything is good? Well, you know Warner's Handbook, and you know. Yeah, I, 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 I keep that next to my bed, and, uh, and I, I, I like grammar, linguistics, and things like that. Can you um, tell me at all about what it was like being a student there during the war? Did you have... Did your cafeteria food change? Did people drive to school? Well, I live four miles from the uh, high school. So, uh, when I was a freshman, I rode my bicycle in the good weather. And my, we, we had three guys who rode bicycles together there. We parked down, uh, down at the corner of Park and that, whatever that East Street, uh, West Street is, uh, down there was a big place for us. So we had a big place where uh, uh, you park your bicycle and so on. I once tried riding my horse to school. Uh, Ralph Lambert and I rode our horses to school and they, they, we lasted one day because we I had problems with that. Uh, we, they, they let us, there, there was a fellow named Hans, who was the uh, chairman, uh, he was in charge of building grounds. The old German fellow was very rough on people. And he, uh, he told us we could bring our horses if we cleaned up afterwards. Well, we didn't like that. <laughs> but uh, we did that about two days, I think, and that was it. The war, I, I heard that uh, Fred Beaster brought everyone in to t uh, listen to the uh, Roosevelt speech, the day that will live in infamy. Do you remember anything about? That was on a Sunday, right? It was on a Sunday, so then the next Monday. Yeah. I don't remember that, but I do remember listening to that on the radio. Things changed a lot in the, war, in the wartime then. The girls all worked with the USO downtown. The war started in 40, 41, and so I, I all through high school there was war, and it was a, a lot different for us. I, I was crazy to go into the Navy because Elmer Stolte uh, was a, a JG in the uh, Navy, and he, he, was, he went in 
I kept in contact with him all the time, went in the Navy and did, did all the things that uh, he did. And when he was up at Great Lakes, uh, when he was at Maine, he was still a Naval Reserve and I was I was too and we went up to uh, um, he was, what is it? Glenview Naval Air Station. He was the he was the officer a day up there and I'd take me, me, me with him and uh, uh, I would uh, well, he'd go to sleep, and he said, "Oh, you're your junior officer of the day for not from now on, and that sort of thing." Uh, but the Navy, wartime, well, you, 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 everybody knew he was going to go into the service, uh, and so, and I got in. I went down on my 17th birthday and signed up for a college program, and uh, with provision that I do it after I got out of the uh, out of high school. But uh, the, the war seemed to uh, run everything for us. I mean, I, uh, well, for example, um, when I, I could have gotten, I wouldn't have had to go in the Navy if I didn't want to, I, although I, they were drafting everybody because we were farm boys. And uh, uh, if you're a farmer, uh, you were producing meat and things like that, and you could get a deferment. But I didn't want the uh, deferment. I wanted to get in the uh, in the, uh, in the service. Um, I do remember that uh, when I was a, a freshman, had to take freshman and sophomores had to take gymnasium gym. Even if you were in a in a uh, sport or anything, you had to take gym. Uh, in my junior year, they they. You, you, sophomore, uh, junior and senior, you didn't have to take gym. I was a farm boy. I worked harder than... Uh, <laughs> uh, gym class is pretty easy then. Yeah. Did you know a fellow named Jim Smith? No. Jim Smith, a fellow named Hank Boer. Hanky Laboer, we used to call him. He was the head of the PE department. And then he uh, he was drafted. And a guy named Jim Smith took over. And uh, he was the head of PE. And... He was, the, he was the one I had a problem with uh, about getting in the Navy because you had to have a gym requirement, you know, and, <coughs> and they had reinstituted that. And he wouldn't give me any credit for that. Uh, I had a big argument with him, but it's rather interesting. He was chairman of, of, uh, of the uh, PE uh, athletic director, I guess, for years. And about in the 1960s, this kid came to me looking for a job. His name was Jim Smith, and I said, uh, "Oh, Jim Smith." Well, of course, there are a lot of Jim Smiths around. We know yeah. Jim, uh, Alderman Jim Smith, but uh, I said, "Oh, well, there's a guy from Glenbard High School. Hit my father." And um, I, I hadn't got along with his father. And here I was interviewing him for a job. I didn't happen to have a job. He came to see me, but he was a really nice kid. So I got him a job out in Palatine or uh, or somewhere out there. I don't know, remember where it was. I knew a guy, and he got a job out there. But it was funny. You got to be careful who, who, who you know. The world is small. The world, world is small. small. Right. Uh, the, in, in the junior year, the second semester, they said all seniors must take gym because of the war. You want to get into good shape and things like that. So that was all added to your to your program.